you think that your adult onset acne problems are going to be solved by going on the pill or worse yet by going on spironolactone trust me been there done that that is not where you want to go i've got answers for you and maybe some different solutions that you probably have never thought about let's talk about it i'm going to give you a different path to take everybody kelly alexa here fitness fanatic confidence coach serial entrepreneur, and most recently, keto convert, but certainly somebody that has known no shortage of hormone problems, and one of those being a major, major problem dealing with skin issues. Those of you that have been following me for the better part of 10 years, probably 10 years plus, I think I started YouTubing here back in 2008. So if you've been following me all of this time and tuning into my YouTube channel, you know I've been talking about my skin problems and trying to figure out the origin of the skin problems, what was causing the skin problems for years and years and years. So I can relate to your pain if you're tuning into this video wanting answers. I'm gonna share with you my history here. I'm gonna share with you what I discovered because I'm gonna tell you, I have gotten to the point in my life now at age 52 where I am not taking anything for my skin issues. I don't have the, what I thought was adult onset acne. And I wanna point out, give you guys some advice and things to consider because all the years I wasted taking all of the wrong drugs and the wrong advice from the wrong doctors, that's what I wanna save you from. I wanna save you, that's really the purpose of so much of the content that I put out is really to save so many of you from the hurt and the pain and the struggle and the waste of time and get you, uh, <laughs> like decrease the time from point A to B, get you to the right place so that we, we decrease the time on the struggle bus. That's what this is all about, right? Let's get to it. You know the drill. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also hit that cute little bell so that you're notified every single time I put new content out. Let's get rolling. Okay, everybody, welcome back. I do want to start talking about this whole adult onset acne situation. I do also want to say, um, I apologize. I have been missing in action for probably two, three weeks, and I just wanted to give you an explanation because <laughs> I kind of came back, yay, I'm relaunching my YouTube channel, and then it was like, Okay, she started publishing videos again and then I just went MIA. I did want to tell you there was a reason. Sadly, uh, my father had a pretty significant fall and um, I had to fly home to Chicago. So he fell um, on the bottom of his, uh, bottom of his stairs, bottom of their stairs in Chicago and um, really just kind of went flat down. It literally was a near-death experience. Um, went flat down at the bottom of their stairs and um, broke, broke, fractured several bones in his face, broke his toe, um, had bleeding in his brain. I mean, it was a, it was a very, very awful experience. So not only was it, you know, I was in Louisville, Kentucky on a business trip when it happened. Um, then I came home and there was just, just, you know, all of this back and forth and what are we going to do? And, and I had to fly home, help him get discharged from the hospital. We were arranging all of this care and, you know, there's times like that in life where you kind of just have to put everything else aside and stop worrying about things like Instagram and YouTube and, and whether or not people are gonna have your, your latest post up and, and your blog post. And that's what I did. I just said, you know, this stuff is gonna have to wait. So um, anyway, I'm back. Let's get started talking about the topic at hand, which is adult onset acne and um, how it relates to hormones and whether or not you should be going on the pill or spironolactone. These are some of the most common things that, that um, either an OBGYN or a primary care doctor is going to put both men and women on. Um, and it breaks my heart because this is this is what riles me up because it is what you should not be on um, for adult onset acne. Now, 
You know I was going to have to take a sip of something before I got started. Before, before I get rolling, let me give you a brief history, my history, so that you guys know where I'm coming from and how I can relate to the struggle that you're likely going through with your adult onset acne situation. So um, I certainly had acne when I was younger. Uh, my acne in high school started probably around my, I'd say sophomore year, I had acne. Sophomore, uh, sophomore through senior year, I went to see a dermatologist. I was put on all kinds of antibiotics. I went through a couple of rounds of Accutane back then. Um, I'm pretty sure if I know Accutane is now, uh, outlawed is probably not the right term, but I, I'm pretty sure they don't even let people prescribe that anymore. But I have been on many, many rounds of Accutane. It is a very, very harsh drug. Um, crazy that they prescribed it so casually back then and certainly as recently as I think five, seven years ago because I was on it back then. Um, so I was on uh, prescription drugs from a dermatologist um, in high school and then I got into college and probably because I went on the pill through Planned Parenthood at age 19, that probably because it was altering my hormones maybe that uh, did start altering things and maybe that's what made my um, skin kind of be okay. But I really never had acne problems most of my adult life. Now, when my hormones, uh, ironically, <laughs> the shit show started happening in my life right when I was going through my divorce in 2007. So my husband came home after just a year of marriage and said, I don't love you anymore. Um, I'm leaving you. I've been cheating. He didn't let me know he was cheating on me, but that was really it. Um, I don't love you anymore. We're getting a divorce. I'm calling a, an attorney in two days. And within that week is when I broke out in these rock hard bumps all over my neck, um, which inevitably spread to my chest and my uh, arms and my back. Um, it didn't really go up on my face. Now, these bumps were, I always describe them as rock hard. They were, the, they were just that. They were like mosquito bite size. Um, not to be gross, but I do feel like I have to explain this to you because there's different kinds of bumps and there's different kinds of acne. And, and when you go and you see a doctor or a dermatologist, you're gonna have to be able to describe certain things. So, you know, not to, not to be gross, but I have to be kind of gross. When you have a pimple, a pimple usually has a white head or a black head. There's, there's a center to it, and if you squeeze it, something will come out. These bumps that I got were hard, and believe me, I tried to squeeze them or pop a pin in them. I'm just being honest, and I know that's gross, but you couldn't squeeze them. There's not, they were hard, and they hurt. Um, they were more like mosquito bites that, you know, if you, a mosquito bite, you, it just doesn't go away. It just is a bump and it just stays there. And that's what these bumps were like. Um, but the doctors that I would go see kept thinking they were acne. And it was very weird because I knew that they weren't acne, but all of these doctors, whether it was my primary care doctor or inevitably he referred me to a dermatologist who referred me to another dermatologist, um, everybody kept treating it like it was acne. And I'm like, these aren't pimples. Like what, there's something very weird going on here. Anyway, um, it, it all started again when I was going through my divorce. This was also simultaneously when I didn't realize it at the time, but this was when my hormones started changing and I was going through the beginning phases of perimenopause. So I was gaining weight, uh, my husband was leaving me, and my skin was breaking out. Good times for Kelly. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> um, so the, the bumps were just all over, very painful, nobody could figure it out. My doctor, my primary care doctor at the time put me on antibiotics. When those didn't work, he just doubled the dosage, then doubled the strength and doubled the dosage. That didn't work, he sent me to a dermatologist. The dermatologist put me on Accutane, put me on another dose of Accutane. Um, that got rid of it for a while, but it just came back. So later I went to a different dermatologist who said, oh, you have adult onset hormonal acne. And I'm like, oh, this woman gets me. She really gets me. And when she said it was hormones, I'm like, she's special. She gets me. And she said, we're going to put you on spironolactone. It's this miracle drug. 
So for everybody listening to me right now, I really want you to pay attention to this point. If any doctor says that they're gonna put you on spironolactone and they use the word miracle drug and that it's special and that you're gonna be on this for the rest of your life, you need to run. Spironolactone is a nightmare. It will mess with your hormones. It is what they put men on who are transitioning to be women. If that tells you how harsh this drug is, how much it is messing with your hormones, okay? It is an anti-androgen. That means it is going to dramatically affect and decrease. It's basically attacking your testosterone, okay? So think about that's why men who are transitioning to become women love love it. But if you're a woman, you don't want to have your testosterone being attacked and, and you want to have testosterone because testosterone helps you. Um, testosterone is good for women. Testosterone is good for weight loss. Testosterone is good for libido. Testosterone, um, too much testosterone is bad. But trust me, you don't want to be working on balancing your hormones and be, ta be taking a drug that is going to be quashing all of your testosterone. Furthermore, if something is quashing all of your testosterone, it's going to affect all of your other hormones. All of your hormones work in concert with one another. So spironolactone is not something that you want to be on. I was on it for nine years and it messed with my hormones. I was also on the pill because when you go on spironolactone, they tell you to go on the pill because you also can't get pregnant when you're on spironolactone because it's a really, really severe drug. So trust me, these are all things that you want to avoid. If you have, if you start getting acne as an adult, these are things that are very common. An OBGYN might put you on spironolactone. An OBGYN is probably gonna tell you that they're gonna put you on the pill. A primary care doctor might put you on the pill. An endocrinologist might put you on the pill. Putting you on the pill, putting you on Accutane, putting you on spironolactone, any or all of these things are knee-jerk reactions that are very, very common and are pretty much going to, should be a red flag for you to tell you that whoever is treating you is not listening to you and is putting you on something that is only going to make you worse down, down the road. Please, 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 I almost wanna say stop this video, rewind it and watch it five more times if you can tolerate me for, for that much. But I urge you, I urge you, everything that I just told you, that I just went through, all of that treatment did so much damage to my body, so much damage to my hormones. And here's the deal. Once I went off all that medication, all of the bumps came back. You want to know what it was for me that was causing the bumps? It wasn't acne. It wasn't my hormones. Do you want to know what it was? Let's talk about what it was. All right, so what's the deal? If you're watching this so far, what are you thinking? Are you listening to this going, holy crap, I'm on the pill, or holy crap, I'm on the pill and spironolactone, or holy crap, my doctor just told me I should go on spironolactone. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Give this video a like, or just give it a dislike if you hate it, or if you're just ticked off, if this video ticks you off because you're like, everything she's saying is true and I am so angry. But seriously, let me know in the comments what questions you have, um, what haven't I touched on, how can I help you, what, what can I answer, how can I help point you in the right direction. Leave it in the comments below. Let's get started. Okay guys, so here is, drum roll please, what it ended up being for me. Now again, obviously, hopefully this goes without saying, what ended up being true for me doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna be true for everybody. I'm pretty sure you guys all know that, but this is pretty significant. So I'm gonna tell you what, what ended up being true for me, which is pretty amazing. And I would encourage all of you to go ahead and I will link this up for you in the comments below so that you can look into it. And I will see, I'm, gonna, I'm working with this company who is the provider of this test uh, to see if I can get special pricing for you guys. Um, but this should be something you should look into. But then secondly, I'm gonna give you my suggestions for what to do if you're encountering you know, a doctor or an endocrinologist or an OBGYN who is suggesting you know, Accutane, going on the pill, any of these other things. So what turned out to be the issue with me 
was a food reactivity situation. Listen to that again. Not hormones, not acne, but a food reactivity situation. Now, I'm trying to think of, it really wasn't even, um, it was my last functional medicine doctor that told me to take this uh, MRT LEAP test. Now, LEAP, L-E-A-P, stands for something. It's an acronym that stands for something. But he wanted me to take this for, for another reason. But what happened was, it, I think it had to do with we, we were you know, trying to heal my gut and we were doing all kinds of testing um, with regards to my thyroid and, and you know, yada, 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 and um, gut health. And uh, so I took this, this test, which again, I'm gonna link down below in the comments. Um, it's an outstanding test, costs about $300, maybe three to $400, and then, and then you pay for a consult to have some, a doctor. If you, don't have a, if you don't order the test from a doctor, you pay for the test, you get the blood work done, and then you pay for a doctor to go through the test results with you. Um, and they can create a diet plan for you if you want or not. Um, but what happened is you, you take blood work, you send your blood work in, they are not testing allergies. There's a big difference between allergies and food reactivity, okay? What this test showed is not that I'm allergic to these foods, but that I'm highly reactive to certain foods, moderately reactive to other foods. In other words, it's, it's measuring inflammation. Um, and I'm paraphrasing here. But what was interesting, and I should post this, I'm happy to post my results, and I will probably regularly get this done because my understanding is that your reactivity can change over time. You can develop a reactivity um, to foods at different times in your life and they can change over, over time. So I took this test and it came back that I was highly, highly reactive. So what it comes back is it shows you red, highly reactive, yellow, just like the traffic light, right? Red, highly reactive, yellow, moderately reactive, green, not reactive at all. So what it showed me, listen to how crazy this is. All the foods that I thought um, I should be avoiding previously, like dairy, I was not reactive, uh, reactive to at all. Things like, you know, the cheeses, all the dairies, the things that I, I thought for sure I was lactose intolerant all this, all this time. I'd been avoiding dairy like crazy, was not at all reactive to dairy. Now again, this is not showing that you're allergic, but you wanna know what I was crazy um, reactive to? Corn. Okay, corn, not only do, we, do I eat corn, I corn syrup is in everything particularly go to a movie theater, have some candy at the movie theater, have some popcorn, um, go to a Mexican restaurant, um, go to, I mean, the things, it's insidious what corn syrup is in, ketchup. Um, one of the things, okay, so let me, let me fast forward, let me, let me fast forward really quickly. Now that I have cut out corn, I don't have bumps. I never get bumps. My life, it is the most wonderful thing because when I was regularly getting these bumps, and I have scars all over my, my arms, my chest, my back, everywhere. And, and when I would get them, you guys, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating to you. When I would get these bumps, particularly on the back of my neck, sometimes I would just run my hand and I, and they would always be, it was, it'd be, <laughs> this is bad how I'm going to explain this to you. It'd be like, there'd be a crop. Like I would get one bump and it would be like a big bump here on my neck and I'd feel it. And, and of course me, I'd, I'd scratch at it and Steve would go, why are you scratching at it? And then there'd be another one here and then another one here. And it would be like, it would be like they were breeding or something. And then there'd be one back here. Sometimes they would, be, I would just run my hand over it and then there would be pain that would shoot up into my head. The strangest, these were like the strangest beings ever. I felt like they had like personalities. <laughs> I know some of you think I'm crazy right now. 
These were the strangest bumps ever, ever, ever. It has been such a joy to have these out of my life. But all this time that I was going to see my primary care doctor, dermatologists, people who specialize in skin issues, um, all of these three different specialists who, th who said they knew what they were doing put me on all of these drugs that made all of my hormones even worse. They couldn't solve the problem. The, the bottom line is when I was on spironolactone and the pill and antibiotics, I would still get the bumps. Think about that. So it's on all of these drugs coursing through my system, making me worse, and I would still get the bumps. Now that all I do is cut out corn, and here's what's funny. If I have one thing, I ordered some Torchy's Tacos queso from Whole Foods. I got it from Amazon Prime now. I ordered a bunch of groceries and I was eating some one week and, and out of the blue, first time in, in months and months and months and months and months, probably over a year, I got some bumps. And I remember going, what? Because now that I'm keto, I, I eat so clean that I, it's very easy for me to go, what did I eat? And I kept thinking like, what? And then I was like, it had to be one of those quesos. Sure enough, I pulled this queso out and there's this corn safflower oil in it. Bam, like that, I get the bumps again. So for me, that's what the skin condition turned out to be. And I will tell you, several women who, it's not like I, I don't wanna say I coach women with, with hormones. I just, a lot of women come to me for advice about hormones and a lot of women who have had skin conditions have ended up talking with their doctors. They've gotten this leap test or a similar test and it's ended up being a food, food issue for them, whether it's removing gluten and dairy or getting a food test and finding out um, a lot of times it's a food sensitivity versus a hormone issue. But what I can tell you is if you have a doctor who is putting you on Accutane, I don't even know if that's still allowed to be prescribed anymore, or the pill or spironolactone, you need to run. Those drugs are horrible for you. Now, in closing, what I wanna say is this, it could be your hormones. It, it's highly likely. It, it absolutely could be your hormones. But if you, are, if you are going to, now let me say this too before I, before I wrap up. I'm gonna be talking a lot on this channel about very, I'm gonna be taking a lot of topics on hormonal imbalance and, and how to achieve hormonal balance. I'm gonna be interviewing my doctor, Dr. Ruthie Harper on here. There's gonna be a lot of topics that I'm gonna be taking and, and taking subcategories and subtopics and, and doing deep dives. And again, having my doctor who has changed my whole life for the first time in 10 years, I've, I've lost, I mean, can I just, for those of you, if, you, if this is the first video you're watching, um, this doctor who I'm with now, Dr. Ruthie Harper in Austin, I, since June 1st, um, I, I hired her in October. She put me, um, after being on a reverse diet, she put me on pretty close to what we call a keto plan. Um, so I've been keto since June 1st. I've lost 24 inches, 18 pounds. Prior to that, I pretty much hadn't been able to lose more than like two pounds. I would, I just, I just been plateaued for like 10 years. Hadn't been able to lose anything. My body has transformed over the, since June 1st. Go to my Instagram, you'll see plenty of before and afters. I feel better, I look better, I am strutting my stuff like a, like a 17 year old kid. It is the best feeling ever. She is amazing. I am living proof that even with crazy hormonal imbalance, you can absolutely reverse things with the right amount of work certainly keto and fasting and um, exogenous ketones as the icing on top. I talk about this a lot. That is the magic bullet for women 40 plus and my doctor taught me that. But a lot of these topics under the blanket of hormonal imbalance, I'm gonna be talking about. So, so don't think that this is the only video I'm gonna publish here on my channel. I, this is my passion is teaching other women all the stuff that I've learned so that you don't have to waste time. So just know that and go back and watch the other videos that I've published already, but know that a lot more is coming. Um, but I do wanna say this to you. If you're seeing an OBGYN, if you're seeing your primary care doc, if you're seeing an endocrinologist, 
and they're trying to put you on any of these drugs I've mentioned in this video, putting you on the pill for your acne, putting you on spironolactone for your acne, putting you on both of those for your acne, or, and again, I don't, I don't know this, if they're still allowed to prescribe Accutane, you need to run. And it is my experience, I don't wanna make a sweeping generalization, but it is my experience that you should not be seeing a primary care doc or an OBGYN or an endocrinologist. You be, should be seeing a functional medicine doctor to help you with your bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment um, or your hormones. Those three people or, or types of practitioners, in my experience when I talk to women who have seen those people, I hear horror stories that I don't even want to tell you. I, I, can't even, I can't even talk about it. So certainly I'm sure there's exceptions, but anyway, that's, that's my recommendation. So I'm going to zip it. I'm going to wrap up. I would love to hear from you in the comments if this video was helpful. I would love to hear from you in the comments what questions you have. I hope that this was a good starting point for you. Um, please, again, subscribe. Let me know what questions I can answer for you in upcoming videos. This is going to be just the beginning of a hormonal series. I plan to have my doctor here. Um, so we're going to do um, a series with her, Dr. Ruthie Harper. Um, and again, make sure you look down below. I will link up that food sensitivity test. Highly recommend that you uh, get that done. I will also link up um, a link to Ulta Lab Tests, which is where I get blood work done. You can get your comprehensive blood work done there. And I will also link up Dr. Ruthie Harper, which is my functional medicine doctor. She does telemedicine visits. She is wonderful. She is accepting new patients. Um, and I'll send, um, I'll also put some links down below uh, to my keto quick start guide. If any of you are interested in just kind of starting to kick the tires on keto, finding out what that's all about. I've put together a whole quick start guide with just everything I've done. Uh, to get great success since June 1st because uh, people pretty much typically answer me, ask me the same questions over and over again. So I put together a quick start guide for all of you guys. And if you want it, it's free for yours, for your taking down below. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, I hope this video was super helpful for you. As I mentioned before, there's a lot more coming up, but please make sure you click on these other two videos that I know will be helpful on hormones.